Hey guys, Mikey here with Tactic California. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I wasn't initially going to do this, but I got a lot of requests. Um, people saw this AR pistol in some of the videos I've done earlier, and they wanted to see a complete overview of this AR pistol. So that's what's coming up next on Tactic California. So the philosophy of this build, and that really dictates what all is going on here, was twofold. One, I wanted to make a home defense carbine, or in this case pistol, um, that was going to be short, compact, easy to manipulate around corners, and keep uh, a, a firm control over. The longer that muzzle is, the more I've got to bring it up or bring it down, depending on what ready position I'm coming from, and other little subtleties, you know, the longer it is, the, the farther back i got to come from a corner to come around it to clear the muzzle. Um, so, a short little tight package, that was definitely part of the philosophy. The other part of the philosophy was I had a lot of AR-15 parts sitting around. I've had this pistol lower for who knows how long and I haven't finished it. So because I had all these parts and I just needed to get something done, that kind of pushed me in the, in the direction of, of completing this pistol. So let's start at the rear of the pistol. At the very rear, we have a Shockwave Technologies blade stabilizer. This happens to be an FDE and it's sitting on top of a CAC, that's K-A-K, -K, Industries blade stabilizer tube um, a lot of people get confused they think shockwave technologies makes this tube or vice versa they think uh, cac industries actually makes the stabilizer neither of those are true they are two completely different companies um, but they they pair so well it's amazing the stabilizer has a screw on the bottom that's what tightens it, it just you know cinches down to the the pistol tube and what CAC did which I thought was genius was they put dimples on the bottom of the tube so that you could position the blade stabilizer put that screw in and then it would go into one of those dimples and hold it in place at a particular uh, length of pull I really like that uh, it was definitely a must for the blade stabilizer anyone looking at the blade stabilizer please look at the CAC Industries tube for it uh, you won't regret it We've got a Magpul ASAP sling plate on the rear. Uh, nothing fancy, it's just something I'm used to. I know a, a lot of people are moving towards QD. Um, I, I had a QD end plate on this uh, originally, and I ended up swapping it out. Whatever reason, I like the ASAP, so that's that's why that's there. It's sitting on a Stag Arms pistol lower, no big deal there. Uh, lower parts kit is an Anderson manufacturing lower parts kit, standard mil spec lower parts kit. Uh, nothing upgraded in there. We've got a Magpul Myad Grip. Uh, this is the, actually the first gen, so it's the one with the, uh, excuse me, the roll pin that goes through the rear to hold the uh, back straps on. Uh, I am a fan of the newer generation ones, however, we had one of these in the store and I, I, I just wanted it, I didn't care. These are those Lancer L5 magazines. I got a lot of uh, <laughs> uh, criticism for saying that I thought that they would get you killed. I'll leave a link to the, that video in the description box below. Um, Honestly, I think they're good mags for plinking around and because they do induce certain malfunctions I actually kind of like running them in training uh, Because then you can work on how to problem solve and and evaluate what's going on and really in the moment While you're under stress and trying to get uh, rounds on target try to fix that problem quickly So I actually do run them in training although for defensive purposes when the when the uh, firearm this pistol or a rifle um, if they are in any way set up for defense these magazines are not in them the upper receiver is a vc defense uh branded mil spec upper receiver that just says uh vc defense right there on the on the receiver other than that it's a standard mil spec receiver there's really nothing to write home about it uh but since i work at vc defense i figured hey i gotta i gotta rep them right uh speaking of that the bolt carrier group is a nickel boron coated mil spec uh, magnetic particle inspected vc defense bolt carrier group i couldn't pass up the opportunity to again rep uh, the store i work at so that's why that bolt carrier is in there pretty standard stuff guys we got the magpul m bus rear sight uh, it's the gen 2 of course and then i've got a bcm gunfighter charging handle this is the mod 4 again it's the charging handle i run in all my ar-15s uh, i just seem to like them and can't get rid of them the barrel is a CAC Industries 416R stainless 
one in seven twist barrel. Uh, I really like this barrel. Shoots great, uh, get good accuracy, get good groups out of it for what it is, a 10 and a half inch barrel. Um, the chamber was a little tight at first. Uh, definitely had to continue shooting. I would say probably 200, 300 rounds into it, I uh, stopped having malfunctions and the gun just started running reliably. The chamber was just uh, too tight from directly from CAC. But again, no problem, just shoot the gun until it starts working, right? The gas block is also the front sight here. It's a Yankee Hill machine, a YHM uh, clamp on gas block slash uh, front sight block. I, I really like it. It's simple. It stays out of the way um, and the front sight works well. So I really can't complain there. The muzzle device is a Voltor uh, 556 compensator. They call it the compensator. I believe this is of proper length that if you wanted to pin and weld something to a 14 and a half inch burrow, you could. However, obviously I didn't do that here. The, the rail is a Daniel Defense light seven inch rail. It, I had it lying around from a previous build that I had changed some stuff out on and uh, I really like it. Obviously I've got Magpul uh, ladder panels covering the, uh, the sides here. And this is a Magpul AFG2 in FDE. I really like that. The light that's on it is a Haley Strategic Partners WML Enforce. It's a momentary only light. Uh, that's the way I like it. I don't like constant on lights on my defensive guns if I can help it. So definitely threw that on there. And it's sitting on top of a Magpul forward light mount. So I, I really I really dig that. It gets the light out for, uh, farther front. It's an inexpensive option. I have a thorn tail on my full size. Um, you know, the, that mount alone, I've got LaRue mounts, I've got all kinds of different mounts and they cost a lot of money. This Magpul mount, I think it costs less than 20 bucks. That's a pretty good mount. So definitely look into that if you're looking for a light mount. The optic we're using on this build is a Trigicon MRO sitting on top of a LaRue LT839 lower one third quick detach mount. I really like this mount. I will be doing a review on this mount when I do the review of the MRO. So be on the lookout for that if you're looking for this optic uh, and this mount combo. But definitely, uh, if you're thinking about getting this mount, spoiler alert, get it. It's a great mount. If you have questions about this build, please feel free to leave questions down in the comment section below and I will do my absolute best to answer every question in full detail. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you liked the video, please click like and subscribe to the channel for more videos that we got coming your way on other guns and reviews. I'm Michael with Tactics California. Thanks for watching.